After failing to kill Lori Strode and taking six bullets from former psychiatrist Dr. Sam Loomis, Michael Myers has followed Lori to the Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, where she's been admitted for Myers' attempt on her life. The institution proves to be particularly suited to serial killers. However, as Myers cuts, stabs, and slashes his way through hospital staff to reach his favorite victim. Hey, what's up guys? It is Rob from Movie Review Time, and I am back with another movie review. Continuing on with my Halloween movie series reviews, we are going to talk about Halloween 2, 1981, today. Starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance. It is my favorite sequel of all the Halloween movies. Um, I still do prefer the first movie over this one, but it's it's right up there. It really is. Um, really cool movie. Uh, we have a different director this time. Rick Rosenthal, who came back to direct Halloween Resurrection. Now, I 100% prefer this movie over Halloween Resurrection. I'm sorry. Trick or treat, motherfucker. <laughs> You know, uh, Rick, what were you doing? I don't know. This movie is a hundred times better. <clears throat> but this movie was his uh, directorial debut. I mean, he's done like TV shows. I think he did one TV show before this. And then after that, he started doing uh, TV series. Like, I think he even did like 90210, like the new one. But that's mainly what he came back to do. And him and John Carpenter, man, they didn't get along at all. John Carpenter actually thought he was ruining the the uh, the franchise with the with what he was doing, but um, it was written and produced by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, so he did have his hand in it. It was intended to be the last chapter that revolves around Michael Myers, because then you have this movie, which had nothing to do with Michael Myers. But that's another video. This time we have Dick Warlock who played Michael Myers, and he did a good job. I mean, he moves really slow and stiff. He, he, um, he's pretty creepy when he's just standing there. Um, and he basically uses a scalpel <laughs> with this little thing he's holding. He just walks like really slow and just uses that little thing. Um, but I love the whole hospital setting. I mean, basically it takes place moments after the first movie. You know, Myers gets shot off the balcony, he disappears, he ends up, you know, in an, at a neighbor's place and starts killing. Lori gets taken to the hospital for her wounds. Uh, you know, Loomis is still on the hunt with the sheriff, he's still on the hunt for Myers. And then Michael ends up at the hospital, starts killing anybody that stands in his way. I love the whole nurse uh, scene where he, you know, he drowns her in the, in the hot tub. He sticks her head down in there. It's a little bit bloodier than the first movie. I do like the kills in this. When it comes to the music, though, I don't know. I prefer the first movie uh, by John Carpenter. He did a fantastic job with the score. This one has John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. And now, I'm a really big fan of Alan Howarth. I mean, he did the, uh, the music for 4, 5, and 6. And I do like his take on the Halloween um, and the Halloween music. It was different because it was performed on a synthesizer organ, so it sounded different rather than a piano. It, you know, had like a slow vibe to it. It's like it, it sounded more gothic. It really did. It had a featured song, Mr. Sandman, which I thought fit. And a lot of people say that it really doesn't. I think it gives, um, I think it gives it like a different mood. I don't know. Like I, I like it. It gives it. It's part of the charm, um, and it also, you know, ended up being an H two O, Mr. Sandman. But Jamie Lee Curtis stated that she came back for this movie because she felt like she owed it to the fans that gave her, um, you know, such high praise in the first film. I mean, they did. You know, it, it set off her career. I mean, look in the 80s, how many horror films she was in. I mean, Terror Train, Fog, Prom Night. She was really booming in the 80s. I mean, it really launched it. And so she felt, she wasn't really like contractually obligated like she was in Halloween Resurrection. 
But in this one, she came back because she felt like she owed it. And I'm really glad she did. I'm really glad she did. This was intended to be the last one. Because let's face it, at the end of this movie, Michael Myers and even Loomis had to have died. Because Loomis shoots him five times. I mean, not to mention he shot him six times in the first movie. He shoots him five times. Lori shoots him twice in, in, in both eyes. She shoots him in uh, once in each eye, okay? Uh, Myers ends up stabbing Loomis in the stomach, so he's injured. He, he ignites the, the, the gas and explodes with him and Michael Myers there. So, you know, Michael Myers is burning up on top of being shot six times in the first movie, five times by Loomis in this film, and then two times by Laurie. I mean, the guy will not go down. So I think it's pretty much confirmed in this movie that Michael Myers is superhuman. I mean, he just gets up after the... During the first movie, he gets up and he, he's walking around at the beginning of this film like it's not even bothering him after being shot six times. So, Michael Myers can withstand a lot. He really can. I mean, he was even said in a, in a 1982 interview with Carpenter when he was asked what happened to Loomis and Myers. And he flat out said that the shape is dead and Loomis is too. That's what he says. This was going to be, this was it. This was it for Myers and even Loomis. And of course, this had the famous plot twist of Lori being Michael's sister. Just like in Empire Strikes Back, when we find out, you know, the second movie at that time, we find out that Vader is Luke's father, which was a huge deal. Just like in this movie, a huge reveal that they were brother and sister. So it gave him even more reason to come after her, um, gave him a motive. Michael can take a lot, man. He really can. This had a higher budget than the first one, considerably higher, 2.5 million, made like 25 million at the box office, I think US, but um, it did very well, and I really, you know, fans were kind of upset because they wanted to see more of Michael Myers, they wanted to see more. I mean, when this movie first came out, I don't think it was received very well, and people were starting to th say, you know, where's Michael? Like, we need Michael Myers back. I like this movie. At first, when I was younger, I didn't, but I like it a lot. But Halloween 2 was supposed to end Michael for good. Donald Pleasance, I mean, he plays oh, like an even better role in this movie. Uh, he just, um, just everybody in general just did a fantastic job. What did you think of Halloween 2 1981? Let me know in the comments what you think of this movie. And where would it rank on your favorites list of Halloween? Like, like how high would it rank? I mean, of course, for me, my favorite is the first one. But um, I think my ranking would go the first one, then this movie, then I think H2O. All right, guys, so that's my review of Halloween 2 1981. Thank you for watching this. I uh, hope you stay tuned because next is... Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Uh, thank you for watching this. Um, you know, subscribe if you have not. Really appreciate all the comments and support. Uh, this is Rob signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next one.